Hello crafters, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll show you how you can make unique abstract painted backgrounds for your handmade cards using watercolor paper, acrylic paint, and a flat brush. It is very simple, quite relaxing, and the results are super fun. In the second part of this video, I'll also show you how I use these backgrounds to make several cards. Let's get started, shall we? I picked several bottles of acrylic paint from my stash. Now these are all different brands, different types of paints. It doesn't really matter what kind of paint you use. You don't need anything fancy. I simply picked the colors of the paint that I liked and I didn't worry at all about the type of paint I was using. We're just making a card background on paper. So paint quality or paint properties don't really matter here. I uh, picked black, a dark blue, teal, and green, or almost like an olive color for these backgrounds. These are the colors I really like. You, are, of course, can use whatever colors you prefer instead. I also have a one inch wide flat paintbrush. Flat brush works the best for this. The size of the brush will determine the size of the strokes in your paper. So if you want smaller strokes, use a smaller brush. I wouldn't use a bigger brush as the idea is to cut these backgrounds for A2 cards. And if you use a bigger brush, you don't get to see that many brush strokes on the paper. So the one inch brush is probably the largest one I would go with. But the choice, of course, is yours. I have found I prefer the one inch flat brush as it gave me the optimal size brush strokes. I also have a sheet of watercolor cardstock. This particular paper is Arches Cold Pressed Watercolor Paper. This is fantastic quality paper. It is very thick and thus will be able to hold a lot of paint. And this paper has also beautiful texture. And I find I prefer the paper to have texture as the texture will show through the brush strokes. Now there is also rough watercolor paper, which has even more texture if you want to try using that. But overall, any thick watercolor paper will do. You want something to be able to hold a lot of moisture. Now we're not going to use any water here, no water at all. The brush is dry and the technique here is to use that dry brush as is and simply use the paint from the bottle as is. So do not dilute the paint with water. Do not dip the paint brush in water. Just use the paint consistency the way it is with the dry brush. I like to add a drop of paint under the paper and then use the brush to spread it. And I alternate between a light and a strong hand for various kinds of strokes. I pretty much keep my strokes to one direction up and down for this particular color combo, I started with the black paint, the darkest color, and then I moved to dark blue, teal, and green. So I go from dark to light. This way, I don't have too much black on the finished piece, but at the same time, I do ha have some of those black strokes on my background. I do not clean the brush in between different colors. I might wipe it on the scrap paper off to the side or on a towel that I have by my desk, but I prefer to just work all the paint that I have on the brush onto the watercolor paper that I'm working on. This way, the paint mixes directly on the brush, giving me different unique shades. This process is also very calming, and I don't think there is a right or a wrong way to do it. If you think your background looks too dark or you have too much of a particular color, you can always go over it with white paint to lighten the color or mute it. I did not use any white for these backgrounds, but you certainly can. I do plan to make a bunch more of these backgrounds using different color combinations. You can also use various tools to apply the paint, not necessarily a paintbrush. You can use a squeegee or a spatula or an old credit card. Different tools will give you different look strokes and it's all worth experimenting and testing. Now with the background done, I set it aside to dry and it usually doesn't take too long as there isn't that much paint on it. If you want, you can also add touches of metallic paint, maybe gold or silver for some shine and shimmer, 
or you can simply spray the background with a shimmer spray if you'd like to add some sparkle. I didn't do any of that. I just kept my backgrounds as is. I made several of these backgrounds. I was actually in the zone and I kept painting away. They all featured the same colors, but each background is slightly different. No two backgrounds are alike and that's the beauty of this technique. From here, I can trim my backgrounds to size. I typically make A2 cards, so I'm going to cut these to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And as I'm cutting, I'm being mindful of the pattern. If there's a particular part of the background that I like, I make sure to keep it in the frame of my cut. And one sheet gives me four backgrounds for my cards. So that's quite, quite a lot. So this makes for very easy and unique abstract looking backgrounds. I hope you'll give this technique a go. It really is very addictive and quite fun to try. And Again, you don't need a lot of extra supplies. You probably already have all of these supplies on hand. So just watercolor paper, a dry brush, and some acrylic paints. I used my backgrounds to create cards with several new products from Pretty Pink Posh. Here I have the new stamp set from Pretty Pink Posh, and this is called Flower Buckets Set. And I feel that these little floral arrangements make the perfect focal point for my abstract backgrounds. I'm going to stamp these images in Memento Tuxedo Black ink onto Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. I'm using my Mini Misty to do my stamping. And I'll then color these images with Copic markers. I'll cut them out using coordinating dies and I'll pop them over the backgrounds. I used YG01, YG03, and YG17 markers to color the leaves green. I did very simple coloring, no blending, just flicks of color. So I basically flicked the lightest, then medium, and then my darkest color. These illustrations are very simple, so I wanted to keep the coloring simple and quite minimalistic as well. The flowers and some of the flower centers were colored using yellow markers in Y11, Y08, and Y35. I used R85 to color the berries dark pink. The rest of the flowers were colored using lighter pink in RV00, RV10, and RV11. And the rest of the flowers were colored using B000 and B00 markers. I used cool gray markers to color the pots, starting with the darkest W5, medium W3, and lightest W1 markers. With the coloring done, I used coordinating dies and cut these shapes out in my platinum docketing machine. Next, I pre-planned the cards. I trimmed my abstract backgrounds to three and a quarter, or excuse me, three and three quarter inches by five inches and placed each onto an A2 white card base. I added a floral arrangement in the center and picked a sentiment to go along with it. I also colored some butterflies using Pretty Pink Posh Butterfly Friends stamp set. I colored the butterflies using B000 and B00 markers as I felt the little butterflies would complement the floral arrangements nicely. I also recolored that large flower blue. I didn't like how the pink looked here. It was out of place since I didn't have anything else in pink. So I assumed the same arrangement again. I colored just the flower using B00 and B000 markers. I fussy cut the flower out and popped it up using a foam adhesive square. It's a super easy fix when your colors don't really go well together and it's something that I do quite often. I film mounted the background onto the card base. I love to add dimension to my cards using foam adhesive. Next, I used foam adhesive squares and popped the die cut floral arrangements on top. The butterflies and the sentiments were also foam mounted to finish this composition. This sentiment comes from the simple sentiments set. For my next card, I followed the same idea. The sentiment was created using a combination of two sets, the simple sentiment set for the missing you part and the butterfly friends for the friend part. For the third card, I steam the sentiment directly onto the background using Versafine Onyx Black ink. 
The background was made on textured paper. Remember, I used Arches cold press watercolor paper and it has texture. So it is not the best option for stamping, but using Misty, I was able to manage to stamp a sentiment. This sentiment comes from the Encouraging Greetings stamp set, which is also another set from Pretty Pink Posh. So here is a look at all of the cards I have for you today featuring the abstract painted backgrounds and simple floral illustrations from Pretty Pink Posh. Thanks so much for joining me today. Love you guys and I'll see you next time.